Hi, uh, welcome back everyone. Um, this is a new uh, video on a new chapter, which is uh, chapter 5, the very last chapter, and it's called Steam. Okay, I thought I'd, I'd make this video first. Um, and uh, just giving you, uh, uh, letting you, guiding you through how to visualize the, 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 the questions regarding Steam. Okay, so first of all, we know that Steam okay, has uh, similar properties to a perfect gas or air. Okay, you have uh, pressure, volume, temperature, you also have enthalpy and internal energy. Okay. But the, 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 the difference between steam and perfect gas is that the perfect gas is entirely a gas, a gaseous phase, gaseous phase. Whereas steam in itself consists of, uh, possibly consists of two phase, two phases, gas and liquid. Okay. So, uh, because of this complicate, uh, this complication, uh, the, how you draw the how you draw the indicate the state on the on the graphs on the diagrams will be a bit com complicated so let's just give an example here okay in fact if you go to page 68 the first page of chapter 5 okay the there the, there are already two two diagrams for you to see okay first is your pressure and volume okay a second a second um, graph you, you, a second diagram you can actually draw is between temperature and volume okay it also has a hue over here uh, in a while I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's the difference so, um, like I said, steam consists of a mixture of gas and liquid. Okay, so um, this here uh, is the is the boundaries to where these phases lie. Okay, to the left side of the hill. Okay, they are similar. To the left side of the hill is your liquid state. means it's just water okay on this side to the right side of the hill okay is all gas okay so this is gas so over here we call it the superheated steam okay it's the same over here as over here okay and I like to call this the hill Okay, I always tell my students under the hill, under the hill. So under the hill is the magical area whereby two phases will exist. Okay, and it's a mixture of um, mixture of gas and liquid. Okay, and we call this the wet steam. Okay, and. Uh, if you look at uh, the perfect gas, okay, you have pressure, volume, and temperature. Pressure, volume, and temperature, right? Uh, so by right, you should form up a tree. Uh, you should be able to find temperature somewhere. Okay, so how how does the temperature? How is the temperature expressed in this di uh, diagram? So the temperature is here, and volume is here. So then the question for this diagram is how is the pressure being expressed? Okay, so let's go to this PV curve first, PV diagram first. The temperature, a constant temperature line looks like this. Okay, it's going down. Okay, as it go out, it goes down. So along this line, right, your temperature will not change. Okay, whereas for a TV curve, as you can see from the notes, right, your constant temp pressure line Okay, is going directly opposite. Okay, it's going up. So this is a T constant. This is P constant. Okay, in fact, 
uh, there are many, many infinite number of constant temperature lines, okay? Covering the entire area. And here, there are many, many infinite number of uh, constant pressure lines, okay, covering the entire area. So, um, by picking up one line, it means that you're looking at just one particular temperature. So, take for example, um, if you are, if you, if we talk about um, uh, water in the kettle before it's boiling under atmospheric pressure, okay, your pressure is at atmospheric, right? So this would be P atm, which is usually usually 1.01325 bar. Okay, and when it boils, it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So actually, this line is 100 degree Celsius. Okay, so along this line is a constant temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Why do I say that? Because, okay, uh, the edge of the hue, okay, the hue has two sides. What is so special about these two sides is they define, like I said, they define the region, liquid, wet steam, and uh, superheated. But they also define this thing, uh, the left side of the hue, this line, okay, is the beginning of the point where the liquid starts to convert to gas, okay. And we call this the saturated liquid line. Okay, we also call this the F line. This line is where the liquid starts to convert. Not yet, ah. There's no gas yet, but it's it will start to convert to uh, slowly by slowly, bit by bit, more and more uh, liquid will convert to gas. Okay, this is the onset. Okay, the right side of the hue. Let's use a blue pen. The right side of the hue, this side, okay, is where, uh, is the point where all the liquid has converted into gas, okay, which means at this point, there will be no more liquid left, there will only be gas, okay, so this is the onset, anything further, right, will be just be uh, heating up the pure gas. That's why we call this the superheated region. Okay, so this line, this right side of the hill is saturated dry steam. Okay, we call this the G line. Okay, G for gas. Just remember this. G for gas, F for liquid. Okay, so um, you can, uh, I like to raise the example again. So let's say if your, okay, maybe, maybe you should draw a, a new diagram. Let's say if your kettle, okay, is boiling. Not yet boil. So let's say it is at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. So you will have a 25 degree constant temperature line. So let's draw this 25 degree constant temperature line. Like this okay and I say this is 25 and you are at constant uh, atmospheric pressure right so this line is atmospheric pressure so before the kettle starts to boil at uh, and it is at 25 degrees it is at this state okay 25 atmospheric pressure okay then after that you put the kettle into the stove all right, and you start to heat it up. What it's gonna do is it's gonna go to the right hand side. Okay, so let's draw this first. And this is your hundred degrees Celsius. Okay, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna increase in temperature, right? So let's say it boils, 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 and it hits uh, fifty degrees. Let's say fifty degrees Celsius. So it will cut across the fifty degrees Celsius line. Okay, so it starts from here, it reaches here, so it goes to the right. And then you start to slowly increase that. Okay, and until it's, it reaches 100 here. Okay, and it will start to boil. So this is your F line, right? So along the F line, it will start to boil. It means that the liquid will slowly convert 
mass by mass into gas. Okay, and then you keep on going to the right side. Okay, as you go, more and more liquid converts to gas. More and more liquid converts to gas as until it reaches the G line, whereby all the liquid has finished converting into gas. Okay, and you are at this point here. Any further you go, your temperature will increase again. But you see, so you note that the one 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 aspect about physics that you may have learned before is that during boiling the temperature does not change and this is exactly what is happening during boiling the temperature does not change okay your state is going along the constant temperature line so once it finishes converting all the liquid to gas it will the temperature will start to rise again and meaning that you will go further so let's say it hits 150 degrees celsius Okay, means you will go further and further and you hit this point. Okay, then your your superheated steam is at 150. Okay, because it just keeps on increasing in temperature. It will no longer be here. This region is the wet steam converting and this value, okay, from here to here, we call it the, uh, we are providing the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, and one more thing is this. Um, at the onset of the left side of the hill, it is still totally uh, liquid. Okay, so we have this thing called the X. It's called the dryness fraction. Okay, this value of X exists only under the hill. Okay, because why? Because uh, only under the hill will there be a certain dryness of fresh. Uh, certain fraction of dryness and wetness okay so um so when you are here the dryness fraction actually means how dry is your steam okay so here it is still not liquid right uh, it is still not gas so the dryness fraction of course is zero okay so along the f line your dryness fraction is zero okay and then the value will slowly increase because it gets more and more dry more and more liquid becomes gas until you reach this point all the liquid becomes gas your dryness fraction is effectively 100% which is 1 okay so along this line x is 0 along this line x is 1 anything under the hill in between is between 0 and 1 and that is your dryness fraction okay so I shall stop here